find the bodies, children. We very soon also realized that we couldn't do anything really. We, we couldn't save anyone, we couldn't help anyone. The problem was that the bodies and debris were dispersed over a very, very wide area, approximately 40 square kilometers, a corridor 20 kilometers long and two kilometers wide. It was the largest police operation in the province of Baden-Württemberg, lasting a week and involving over 6,000 people searching for the bodies. The people were all very sad. They were all in a state of extreme shock, and naturally the rescue team could feel that and empathized with their suffering. The policeman is standing where the DHL crashed. Here you see no more trees. The trees have completely burned down. We assume that the turbines of the Boeing separated first, approximately 700 to 800 meters high, before this plane crashed. One landed 300 meters that way, and the other turbine was another 500 meters that way. In this garden lay many of the bodies of the children of Ufa. In this part uh, died 28 children. In this field... Um, there was a child. More over here, in this field, there was a here um, Vitaly Khaloyev, the Russian architect, was awaiting his family in Barcelona. He's one of the first to arrive in Überlingen. Although the relatives are not encouraged to participate in the search, Vitaly cannot help himself. Vitaly finds a broken pearl necklace. He recognizes it as his four-year-old daughter's. Amazingly, amidst all the carnage, Vitaly finds his daughter's body intact. She did not suffer at all. The mutilated bodies of his wife and son won't be found until later. Over six days of searching, the rescue workers gather bodies and body parts scattered all over the southern German countryside. By Thursday of that week, two days later, the relatives started arriving. They could not all see the bodies we'd found because most of the bodies were badly charred or mutilated. We didn't permit the relatives to view the bodies in that condition. In Ufa, in Western Russia, both Christian and Muslim communities are devastated by the loss of their children. In the cemetery, where 53 of the people in the Tupolev are buried, there are two double rows of gravestones, with the Christian Orthodox on one side and the Muslims on the other. It's eerily reminiscent of the seating arrangement on the plain. The monument evokes a flight of paper planes frozen in flight. Vitaly Khaloyev, who lost his entire family, has designed and built a huge monument in their memory.
day and night he lingers at the cemetery, inconsolable. At Skyguide in Zurich, after the collision, work has all but come to a standstill. They were shocked, they were helpless, there was a lot of sadness, people crying. And we were criticized for being too technocratic after the accident. I have to accept that. Uh, one of the biggest tasks was to maintain operations, because there were planes coming in, going out, after this tragedy, and that was a very, very difficult situation for everybody. For the next three weeks at the Zurich Air Traffic Control Center, capacity is reduced for lack of available controllers. Peter Nielsen never again worked on an air traffic workstation. The hunt begins for a scapegoat. If two planes collide in empty skies, someone must be to blame. At first, some suspect the Russians. The pilot of the Russian plane is said to have ignored repeated instructions from air traffic clearly, controllers. And while the repeatedly, Russian pilot... they contacted the Russian pilot and asked him to change altitude because he was flying at a level where he should not have been. Now, the Russian pilot never responded to those warnings from air traffic control. The Russian pilot, particularly in Soviet times and also now, but to a lesser extent, were extremely well trained. I have no concerns about the training of pilots. They've been trained for almost every operational possibility that could happen. Why did the TCAS device meant to avoid collisions, in this case, maybe help cause one? And why didn't the Russian plane descend when first ordered? A language problem? Controller commands are always in English. I knew everybody from that crew. Uh, everybody uh, knew English enough to speak uh, with controller. So who is to blame? The media spotlight now falls on controller Peter Nielsen. He was the man who'd guided the two planes towards each other. They were under his control. He must have caused them to collide. I was as shocked as I could have been with any other name or any other colleague. I was just very sorry for him. The media coverage about the, the incident very often makes you angry because these statements are taken out of context. Uh, they, you really get the impression that they just want to fill the newspaper, they, they write whatever they get. They go after colleagues, they give them a call at home, they like uh, follow you wherever you are. You don't deserve to be the boogeyman for everybody. And that's something which, which really uh, is, is still very difficult to accept that suddenly we are some sort having to, to take the blame because the others are dead or, or, or the others are hiding behind uh, politics, rules and things like this. Uh, we started to leave this building by, uh, by the underground exit, uh, which leads through another building just not to see anybody. They were asking people on the street in Cloton, people who were not involved at all, just to, to broadcast something in the evening. And that makes you angry and you cannot uh, resist it. So what more do we know about this Swiss controller at the center of the investigation? He was chased the by the media. He was accused of being a murder. He's the man, obviously, everyone wants to talk to, but at the moment, the Swiss say he's in no position to talk. And we heard today that the Swiss authorities have opened an investigation to see whether there's enough evidence for charges of manslaughter. The accusation was uh, mans manslaughter by negligence in 71 cases. And uh, the speciality is that the, in this case, the investigating judge has been working on, on a investigation on his own independently from what the aviation investigation board of germany did meanwhile that investigation is underway headed by germany's air crash detectives the bfu by the fifth day they've read all the black boxes so this is a typical voice recorder which was built into the tupelo 154 it shows two reels the recording time of this recorder is uh, 30 minutes. And this is rather solid, but the original voice recorder of the Tupolev was heavily damaged. So we had to remove the tape and replay it on such a specialized tape recorder. This is the hangar where wreckage of the planes was examined. This one here is the lower surface of the right wing of the Tupolev. And that remaining stub here went 
below the tupolev.